A polygenic risk score is a way of taking a lot of genetic variants that each have a little bit of risk and combining them together to give you a bigger picture of someone's genetic risk. Uh, for example, there's a lot of genome-wide association studies that have identified hundreds of these little risk variants, but they can't tell you anything clinically. But if you can combine them, then you can get more power and start to predict risk in individuals. And what we're now saying is that in the future, uh, we can start testing individuals to get a more precise estimate of their risk, irrespective of whether they carry a BRCA1 and 2, and then tailoring the national breast screening programs towards that individual's risk. Because at the moment, most women are screened based on their average risk not their personal risk. Now we're going to be looking for genetic variants which might actually indicate that you were at low risk and it's how women cope with that risk. It may involve actually decreasing their screening intervals and, and how acceptable that is to individuals. And also importantly, as we're getting into more complex modeling, is ensuring that we don't discriminate small groups of the population. Polygenic risk scores are being developed for many different disorders. Cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, those are just some of them, but there's cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's disease, autism, diabetes, so you name it. If there's a disease that has a genetic component and they've done these big studies, they can start to do genome association studies and polygenic risk scores. Polygenic risk scores uh, are an important contributor to cardiovascular disease, specifically the disease that I've studied, which is heart attack. We've looked at patients who have heart attack at a young age and asked, what is the genetic basis for early heart attack? If you take 100 patients with early heart attack, in about two of them, you will find a so-called monogenic mutation. That's a mutation in a single gene of large effect, and that confers some degree of risk for heart attack but that leaves 98% of patients without an answer. The individuals who are high polygenic risk are currently unaware. They're not being caught by the traditional factors that we use to assess risk for heart attack, like cholesterol or blood pressure, because this polygenic risk only tracks slightly with those established risk factors. So DNA is not destiny we've shown that the risk conferred by the polygenic model can be modified by one of two things. One is adherence to a healthy lifestyle, and second is medications to lower cholesterol like statin medications. So that's the reason to really to figure out who's at high polygenic risk. We can actually help them if we figure out that they're among the group that's high risk. SHGTV is brought to you by the American Society for Human Genetics annual meeting in San Diego. For more videos like this, click on the links and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.